Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Evan Hackle. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Training Unleashed. I am your host, Evan Hackle, and I have the true pleasure of having Bill Gothier here as my guest. And why is it a pleasure for me? Well, I had the privilege of working with Bill for seven or eight years, although it's now been, I think, about nine years since we worked together. But we've stayed friends over the years, and I've watched him blossom and grow as a training professional and he truly is a committed, dedicated training professional who works for one of the companies I consider to be one of the best training companies in the world, a company that thinks about training first and foremost when they think about initiatives and launching projects. Training's not an afterthought at this company. So I know that's a fair amount, but Bill, why don't you just quickly give everyone a, a little update on yourself and your role at, at CCA Global Partners. Oh, thank you, Evan. I appreciate being on Training Unleashed. Uh, it's great to listen to all the podcasts, and I'm so happy to be one of the people that you're interviewing. And uh, I've enjoyed working with you for so many years. And my role at CCA is uh, I do the I'm the director of training, so we I oversee all the different trainings. I I participate in the trainings. We do trainings at convention, and it is just uh, we have a lot of fun with it. And you're right, we think about training first here because we. Uh, having so many impact on the people that we work with every day, and I look forward to talking about that as we uh, get on with the interview. So you, I know that this is an older story because it was a long time ago, but when I was there, you were very instrumental in launching a new carpet line called Relax and Salis. And I just thought it would be good for people to understand, you know, one, why did this line matter? Why did the company care if people sold it or not sold it? and how, what training, all the different things training did to make sure that it would be successful. Great. And I remember that Lee's role. It was a big deal for us here. And it's a big deal because Lee's is our brand for our store. So it can't be shopped. It can't, you can't go to somewhere else and get it. So for us, we were, it was our way of putting our mark in the marketplace and saying, this is the best product. This is what people should be buying. We were convinced of it, but we had to convince our store owners of the same thing. Then we had to convince the salespeople to let the customers know that it was the best brand out there and the best product for what they were looking uh, to do in their homes. And when we rolled out the training, we worked. We, we first started with the product people and what they were developing and understanding it. We work with our advisory council, so our advisory council oversees uh, all, all the stores and businesses kind of gives us direction what to do, so we got their feedback. Then we work with the senior management team at that time to put together a good training. And what that good training for us meant was to get the owner committed to selling that product and knowing that it was the best for their store and their customers, getting the sales people on board, getting them trained not just on the knowledge, but on the sales process, how to get the customers engaged and them believing that was the best product for them. So let me just stop you here for a second. I want you to continue, but I want to highlight this point because I believe that in training, the why you're learning is such an important step and one that is skipped that people just assume, well, management wants to do this training or in the training department, we're building the training, everyone should just get it. And what's different about CCA Global Partners is that the stores that you talk about are actually members of a co-op and they have a lot of latitude. So they don't have to do everything and thus you need to get buy-in and get sell-in and that's just a good best practice for anybody, regardless of whether or not they're employees or not employees. People who know why are much more interested in learning than people that are just told to learn. And you might reflect on that and then keep talking about the program because it was an amazing and very successful process. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great point. And, and getting the customer, our member, our business owner buy-in uh, it does two things. It gets them to say, okay, I, you know, this, 
you, I can own this now. It's not just us telling them what to do, but it's them giving us feedback. It's a two-way street. And once we have their buy-in, we know that we're on the right path. So when we go to create the training, it makes it much easier because uh, we know we've got the buy-in. So then, then we create this training, and it was, it was fun to do because we did it in many different ways. We did a, the, the way we delivered it was online. So we had a whole online component that people, uh, our sales professionals, could get on and take the online training. We had a field training component. So we went to 48 different cities and trained salespeople on how to sell the product. And we had an in-store component where we, sell, we, we sent every store, over a thousand stores, a package, a training package. And that training package was very, uh, uh, really kind of into the training, hit the objectives, but it was also meant to be fun. So we did this whole pancake breakfast, banana pancake breakfast. So we said, hey, make these pancakes, talk about the product, talk about, so it was a whole event based on what we wanted them to learn on the product. And we had so many stores that did this event in the store and gave us feedback. It was great. Don't forget the DVD. The one no, the no, no, no. Oh, the D- yeah, well, you know, which is perfect because the DVD made it easier for the business owner to present what was going on. So they didn't have to take on, they had to, you know, they had instruction on how to run the event, but the DVD really kind of helped with the training portion of it. So, why don't so you they didn't have to worry about doing that. Why don't you tell people what was on the DVD because it was kind of fun? Well, the DVD, as I recall, had, had the, the Lee's training, had videos, had them, it taught them how to make the pancakes. It was a, uh, it so was, it was a vent bun fun. It was like a TV show. It was like the Today Show or Good Morning America. Now, you remember it, too. Yeah, it was, it was like a broadcast. It was a fun. It was memorable. And I think making that memorable made it easier for the stores to kind of show and have fun. It actually became, a, I, I mean, I think you, maybe you remember some of the feedback, but the event type uh, just made it so much fun for everyone. So not only am I learning, but I'm having fun, and I'm with my teammates. Uh, something that, that uh, stores don't always do. We're so glad you're listening to this episode of Training Unleashed, brought to you by Tortal Training. The difference between Tortal Training and other online training companies is we're primarily a training company with technology, rather than a technology company that does training. Want to find out more? Just go to Tortal.net. That's T-O-R-T-A-L, Tortal.net. You really created a tremendously comprehensive training program. And when I talk about training unleashed, the whole point of this is that so many people forget training or underinvest in training. So they make a launch and it doesn't succeed and, and it's a failure. In fact, I was just at a C-suite conference in New York and there was a person talking about change and he, they did a statistical review of corporations and change initiatives and 88% of change initiatives fail. So think about that. 88% fail. So here's a major change initiative, but you did it right and had a huge success. And, um, you know, I remember this, but the, the sales of the product were off the charts. The margins that people could earn on the product because it was exclusive were much higher. And because it was a better product, it had a much higher average sale. So it increased the average ticket and increased the margins, and because it was exclusive, it increased the close rate, which had a huge profit benefit to all, all of the stores. So it was, it was massively successful. And, and now it's been, I want to say, 10 or 12 years. Is the product still on the stores? It still, is it still selling? The product is still in the stores, still selling. And uh, we're looking to, to do another relaunch of it because we know that when we re-kick that product and redo the training, it's going to be reinforced and people will get excited about it again. And, you know, I think we're going to have some similar results. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, this isn't your first relaunch. You've relaunched it before, right? Brought out we have, yeah. Re-energized it? Yeah, we, we know when we re-energize it, we, we re-talk about the story, we get people on the same page. It's such a unique product, but the training reinforcing it gets everyone moving the same direction. And again, we see these bumps in margins, average sales. 
uh, and, and members love it. They, they're used to now. Now they expect the training because it's been successful. They expect the training to be that good every single time. So we've created this expectation, but they, they're also willing to participate because they know the results. You know, Ron Perpeel has that uh, rotisserie oven. He goes, set it and forget it. Uh, but nothing could be further from the truth in the world of training, right? You can't just set no. it and forget it. Once isn't enough. Uh, and you have turnover of people, and, and you need to keep reminding people and re-energizing things because it, it's, it's critical. Um, and it, it's interesting to think back at that project and the, you know, the, the total money that we spent versus the money that was gained uh, overall through the sales uh, you know, that the least expense of that whole product launch was the training. Yeah. But yeah, it made such a big impact. You still spent a lot of money on training. Um, yes. And, you know, well in excess of a million dollars all in. Um, but the amount of sales, the amount of profits made that look like, uh, like it was nothing. Um, it did. And, you know, the, the, you know, what I love about this story is you did everything right. Uh, you made yes. it fun. You sold the why. Uh, you made it entertaining. You had blended learning. And so you had the 48 people around the country. You had, a, for the time, an incredibly amazing e-learning, um, e-learning, uh, Course launch, Modern, very interactive, we, yeah. different rooms, games, fun. So you, ga you gamified it. Um, so it was really, really well done. So why don't we shift gears because we've talked about that now, and maybe just share with us. So what are the new things you're seeing in training that are working for you guys? Oh, great! Uh, there, there. Are, there seems to be this that the online training is is becoming so much better in the, in the sense that, uh, and I know probably your experience of this, that now it's becoming a lot more gamification, a lot more feedback base. So I can take something and get immediate feedback. Uh, really taking this brain science of how do people learn and how people retain and uh, what is the cognitive load and taking those theory type things uh, understanding the practicality and putting them into training and seeing kind of a bump on what we're what we're trying to accomplish, that that type of research based and putting into the training is really really helping us uh, knowing what's working. That sounds super cool, but I don't think everyone listening knows exactly what you're talking about. So could you maybe uh, give examples of what you're doing and how you're actually doing it? Yeah, no, good good point, Evan. So uh, when we launch a video, so, so one example, launching a video, and what we would expect the learner to do is watch the video typically, but we, now we want them to watch it and respond to it. And now once they respond, we're given immediate feedback. So what we're doing that just basically just by recognizing their, their response and putting feedback on that, we're looking for key, you know, so if it's a type response, we're looking for keywords and how do we respond to those keywords. Um, or so do, you have, do you have people on your team that read these responses and then respond back? Is there technology so, that you're using that allows you to do this? Yeah, some of it is technology-based, which is, it's, it may, again, the technology's made it very simple. Some of the authoring tools have made this a lot more uh, easier uh, easier to do. Uh, we, we are also doing a lot more uh, coaching work around that. So if someone does take a video on their way off, we, we will have people on staff to go and give feedback if feedback's uh, wanted. I'm working with managers, so that, that's really neat to see and to have fun. Uh, we're also, so some of the other stuff that we're doing is looking at if, if they answer, let's say it's a click answer, we're giving them feedback. We're also starting to give people choices, not just, hey, is this right or wrong? But we want to give them the choice of, hey, if you're not quite sure, take this hint. So they can look at a hint, and based on that hint, they can say, oh, you know what? I, I do recall. So we're, we're trying to get that recall active. And by giving hints, we're doing that. And then not just saying, well, is, now I'm going to give you the answer, but I want to know how confident you are in your answer. So being wow. extremely confident lets me know that you do know the material. 
Because I couldn't get, just guess, and guessing is not good enough. We want them to know and be confident and be able to move forward through the material. We're so glad you're listening to this episode of Training Unleashed, brought to you by Tortal Training. The difference between Tortal Training and other online training companies is we're primarily a training company with technology rather than a technology company that does training. Want to find out more? Just go to Tortal.net. That's T O R. T-A-L, Tortle.net. A lot of questions that people have have to do, how do you get management to buy in to investing in training? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people look at training as a cost center. Um, I don't. I look at training as an investment and a money-making center. Uh, you know, no differently than people look at a marketing budget. You know, they don't look at it as, I'm sure some people look at it as a cost, but, you know, you invest in marketing because you're going to bring people in to buy product, whether it's online, in stores. You invest in training because it's going to make you more effective. Uh, in our case, we've been talking a lot about sales. I know you guys also do a lot of training around installation skills, being more efficient, reducing mistakes. But the question I really have is, how do you get management to buy in? How do you get management to make the investment that's necessary in training? Good. Uh, so training is great, right? I, I can say that. But when I'm talking to a business owner about training, uh, we talk about investments they make in their business. Typically, uh, second biggest investment is people. So how are we getting those people moving forward and doing, them, doing what we want? So I always talk about that new person that comes on board. So how do you get them on board? Because the whole game is to get them to be competent as quick as possible. So if I have store A that brings in a new person, doesn't have a plan, doesn't know how to bring them on, says, hey, sit with this person, um, maybe you should do this, and then three months later I'm wondering why they're not doing the job, that's a big loss for the company. If they invest just a little bit of money and say, we, we offer onboarding plans on our online university, so they can go through this onboarding plan. And it's not just I'm going to click and go through classes. It's also I expect the person to go out and do this. I expect them to do this. So what we're doing is we're, we're, we've taken all the competencies that we expect a sales professional to be able to do and put it into a 90-day program. And it's coached all the way through by a, a, a training special, specialist like us and the manager. So the manager knows what's going on. So in 90 days, now I know that this person's had all these experiences, all these competencies. I know they're not going to be 100% in all of them, but I, I know that I can get that person working and making money, not just for the business, but also for themselves. So I'm going to tell you what I just heard. And I'm doing this for the listeners, and you may not actually realize this, but I love what you just said. And I love it because you're painting a picture of an outcome. And a lot of times we talk factually. Uh, when we can, we love to talk ROI, you know, numbers, dollars. And, and I know for a fact that you guys have statistics that can show the improvement in sales by people doing this. But you're also creating visual visualization in the mind that you're helping people see that end result by just listening to what you said. And I want to commend you for doing that because that's a great skill. And, and I think that's something that we can all take back and say, you know what, when we're, when we're trying to get support within the system, you know, create the picture, create the outcome in a way that people can really see. And, and I could just visualize the coaches talking to the people and, having that program and, you know, you do a great job re really, really doing it. Um, another benefit that I'm catching from this is if you go get a trainee to go through that program, they're probably going to be much more receptive to training down the road because they know how much it helped them from the start. Do you find that to be true? We do. Most people that go through the onboarding, uh, onboarding program we feel like we can communicate to them and tell them about the benefits of a training that's going to happen six months later. And their likelihood to enroll is much higher than someone that hasn't been through an onboarding program. So now, now all of a sudden, we're, you know, the, the owner is still paying for that training six months later, but the owner knows the value because they see it. They see the performance of the person. And the person understands it because they wouldn't be performing without that onboarding training. 
Yeah. So the other thing I love, and because I used to work with Bill, I know this, you know, back before the internet, back before, you know, all the avenues that we have today, the way in which this training was done were people were sent to these boot camps. And these boot camps were, I, sometimes they were three days, and I think we moved to four days, and I, I don't really remember. The boot camps were hugely popular, hugely successful. But they don't have the elements that you have now. So, you know, you send someone to a boot camp, they get energized, they come back, but there's no coaching that's following up. It's a single modality. It's live training. So you're taking blended learning. You're taking coaching. You're taking a period of time for real reinforcement. So you're not just training someone and leaving them. And you describe to me the quintessential training program, which is really comprehensive, utilizing all the different modalities of training, incorporating the people at the store level into the process, not just the training department, uh, getting the buy-in. Um, so I'm, I'm giving you a big compliment here, uh, Bill. Mm -hmm. Um, no, thank you very much. Appreciate that. You know, and as I've always said, you know, CCA is a company that is an, exam an exemplary example of a company that understands the importance of, of training. Um, and, you know, I'll ask you, you know, we're coming close. I have two questions last, so this is my second to last question. How popular... How popular is your training with the people in the field, with the, with, the, with the people taking the training? Do people like it, hate it? Do you have to force them? What, what, how popular? So, good. So, we, out of all of our members, we have about 80% of them participate in training. 65 of them willingly uh, look due to the training, so they look out for training messages, new modules that are coming out, new training. Uh, they're actively asking us to develop training and deliver training. 15% say, hey, you know what? I really like it. It's good. When we poll the members each year or every other year, we ask the, our, our members, which are our store owners, why are they in our co-op? Training is consistently in the top three, actually in the top two, of why they're in the co-op. That's fantastic. So one of the things that's important for people to understand, and, and this is why I think training is so successful, is because they run a co-op, their members are not forced to do anything. Everyone chooses to do it. So um, imagine that you get 80% of your people to choose training. Uh, that is a huge accomplishment. And I can tell you, because I work with a lot of clients, and of course, at Total Training, we have a lot of clients. And there are some that are in the franchise business where they can force training that have far lower compliancy rates than you have when it's unforced. And the question is, why is that? And I think the why is what we talked about earlier, is that you spend a lot of time explaining the why. And I think that people that know that people have to take the training, they skip that step. So it, people do everything they can to avoid it. And the fact that you have to get buy-in requires you to do this next step that makes you very, very successful. Um, so I want I just want to point that out because I think for people listening this you know the big epiphany you know you've had a lot of great epiphanies is the importance of the why. So my last question is if you could share one tip to help people that are training professionals in any any way how they could be better how they could improve training any tip that you have at all what tip would you like to share? Great. There are so many of them, but I'll share one. I share this with a lot of owners and managers. I call it the three what's. If I have someone that's reporting to me or that I'm working with, and I see something that I either like or don't like, to shape their behavior, I use the three what's. First, I ask, what happened? So what just happened? Was it something negative or something positive? Then I ask, well, so what? What was the result of you taking that action? 
And then I say, now what? What are you going to do in the future? Are you going to continue doing that because of something good? Or how are you going to change to make it a good? So it's the three what's. Uh, what happened? So what? Now what? Those are fantastic. Quick, That's simple, fantastic. easy way to get feedback. Yeah, good way, and it's a nice way of not having really blame and That's bringing correct. them into the solution. So a yeah. great, great advice. Bill, I knew this was going to be a great interview, and you have not let me down. I want to thank you for being a guest. I want to thank our audience for listening. Um, I want to thank the C-Suite Radio Network for being one of our partners. And Bill, any you want to say goodbye? Yes, uh, thank you, Evan, so much uh, for having me as a guest, and I look forward to listening to this and other uh, interviews on Training Unleashed. This has been Training Unleashed, but it doesn't stop here. Just go to trainingunleashed.net to subscribe to the show. That way, you'll never miss an episode, and you'll be well on your way to delivering training programs that are off the chain. We'll talk to you next time on Training Unleashed.